Hello, BookTube. I have a little mail for you once again. I have three packages, and they're in three different kinds of containers. <laughs> a manila envelope, a cardboard envelope, and a box. So it's a spread. Let's see what we have. Uh, let's see if anything is of interest here. Uh, what is this? Oh. Oh, my. Uh, oh, great. Fantastic. So, well, this is a bit of a surprise. Uh, so, okay, this is a, another piece of translated literature. A trend that we have seen all in 2020, just buried in, uh, in translated literature. This is from Sophine Books, uh, and this is by Rafi, and it is Harlem, Harem, first published in 1874. And this is, according to the note here, the, the uh, first ever English language translation. Uh, so what do we have here? Let's see here. Harem is the first novella of prolific 19th century Armenian writer Hakob Melik Hakobian, better known as Rafi. First published in 1874 in the Armenian language, Harem is, bo is based loosely on events in intervening intervening the Battle of Chrysanesi Chrysanesi in, 18, in 1795 and the Russo-Iranian War of 1804. In between? Does it maybe mean in between those two events? Intervening doesn't work. Uh, the narrative evocatively brings to life events at once sensual, dark, and conspiratorial in and around the royal palace of the crown prince of Persia, where the most interesting things happen at night. And this is translated by Bion Miolan and Kimberly McFarlane. That's <laughs> a classic back-to-back -back case of the kinds of names that Steve can pronounce and the kinds of names that he can't pronounce. Fantastic. Uh, okay, great. Uh, the, these people, this is just this lovely, understated, beautiful cover design. The, uh, the, uh, this publisher uh, did a book last year that I thought was spectacular. Jalaluddin, a uh, portrayal of his incursion. Uh, same translator, same design, just a terrific glimpse into a literature that I know virtually nothing about. And they are following it up. They're following it up with another one. Great. Uh, I'm gathering this is out already. Uh, and it was just sent to me. Fantastic. Okay, so not going to take any time at all to read. It's a very thin thing. But boy, oh boy, I am spoiled for choices when it comes to literature and translation in 2020. Uh, so that's great. That is fantastic. Uh, because that's that's kind of what I restrict myself to, right? I'm not going to go looking for these things. Uh, because I'm I'm sort of personally devoted to reading all of uh, the major releases in the American market in 2020. So I, I, much as I would be curious to go elsewhere, I am relying on, on literature and translation to get me stuff. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is... Uh, this is from FSG in, in July. Who knows what things will be like in July. This is a novel by Carlos Fonseca called Natural History, uh, which braids together several narrative strands as a host of provocative ideas into a brilliant and expansive second novel, beautifully translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. So once again, it's another work in translation. Uh, the author was born in Costa Rica, grew up in Puerto Rico, studied at Stanford and Princeton, and now teaches Latin American literature and culture at Trinity College in Cambridge. The action and ideas of natural history are just as peripatetic. As Fonseca's novel uh, begins, we meet a Puerto Rican curator from a New Jersey natural history museum who some years prior had struck up a relationship and collaboration with a renowned and mysterious fashion designer, now deceased. As the curator sifts through the designer's papers and his memories of their relationship, he begins to piece together her family's remarkable story. From here, Carlos Fonseca skips back decades in time to introduce us to a young Israeli photographer who, drawn to the idea of Latin America, sets out on a voyage across the Atlantic to the Americas where he falls in love with a glamorous New York-based fashion model who will almost certainly go on to become the fashion maven who dies at the beginning of the book. Uh, Fonseca immer immerses us in the world of 1960s and 1970s New York City, hmm. where the photographer and model flit from uptown society to downtown Bohemia, plunging themselves into the drugs, radical politics, and outre spiritualism of their era. 
I don't know about how Trey spiritualism, but uh, New York in the late 70s, oh my, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, I don't think I can accurately convey to you the uh, combination of anger and pity that you can get in the stare of someone at Studio 54 if you bring a book. <laughs> uh, wow, okay, so this novel overflows with fascinating detours and big ideas throughout. It's the author's second book. Uh, and it encompasses everything from the history of photography and the strange story of B. Traven, the elusive author of this Treasure of the Sierra Madre, to the paintings of Edward Hopper and the masked image of Subcomandante Marcos, the leader of the Zapatistas. This may sound like a lot for a single novel. I'm glad the pub sheet mentions it. Uh, this may sound like a lot for a single novel, but one of the great pleasures of natural history comes in seeing how the author ingeniously pieces together everything into a narrative that is at heart both an engrossing mystery and a moving family story. Okay, great. Uh, all right, fantastic. So this comes out in July. It's translated literature, so I, I don't uh, I don't quite need to think about it uh, yet. It's a long way off. Uh, but it's intriguing. <laughs> it's intriguing. I don't need to put Hiram off. I can read this right away. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to put off natural history until the summer. Uh, and then we'll do this last one, which is a thin block, a box, and then we'll see see where that leaves us. We've got no other formats are possible. <laughs> just those, just those three. Let's see here. What have we got? Don't tell me this is another book in translation. No, no, it's not. Okay, all right. This is from the University of Nebraska Press. They're always good. Uh, they're always good. They have a, a keen eye for uh, for sort of B-rate, B-level, also ran stories that the, the authors end up making fantastic. But you've never heard of them before. You've never heard of these inquiries. And this looks like it. This looks like the, it's going to be one of those. This is by Cat Williams. And it's called Isabel Lefty Alvarez, The Improbable Life of a Cuban-American Baseball Star. And aren't you interested already? Despite the faded sapia tone cover, you're interested already because this is this is what what uh, this press tends to do. They tend to find gem stories like this and just, or rather, they're pitched. I'm sure the gem stories like these and and they just are fantastic. I've no, I have read so many University of Nebraska press books that have stuck with me longer than I would expect them to. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, the author traces Isabel Lefty Alvarez's life from her childhood in Cuba where she played baseball with the boys on the streets of El Cerro, to her reinvention as a professional baseball player and American citizen. Uh, this book gives the reader a look into Alvarez's young life in Cuba during the turbulent years leading up to Castro's revolution as political differences tore apart families. Alvarez came to the United States at 15, speaking no English, and experienced the challenge of immigration as her mother pushed her to become a professional athlete in her newly adopted home. Fantastic. Okay. All right. I don't know this story at all, and now I'm going to. Uh, so let's see here. This comes out. Uh, the date. The American date is May the first, uh, and I will. I will just. Uh, I'll put it on the May shelf. I. It's. It's. Uh, I don't know enough about it, and I'm not. I mean, this is fascinating. It's going to make great for great May reading, but I have to midden some things away. So the only thing in these three here, we have a biography of a Cuban American, a Cuban baseball star that that I've never heard of, of course. Uh, we have uh, a second novel in translation, Natural History, uh, and we have another English translation by of Rafi, uh, this one, Harem, which is the one thing in this mail hall that I will read immediately, uh, because I thought uh, that Jalaluddin was so good. It was just such a strange and assured and wonderful and strange and unknown to me literary world that I just, I couldn't get enough of it. So, uh, great. Fantastic. So that is our mail for today. It's, it's not much, but it's more than I was expecting. <laughs> so I'll wrap this up for now, but we have other things to talk about. So I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.